Welcome back to Akron Summit's franchise. A surprising start to the season. I don't know about you guys, but I know I sure did not see this coming. We are three and one to start this young campaign. And if we get a look at the AFC West here, Kansas City Chiefs are three and one as well. They do have the tiebreaker over us currently. They are the fourth seed, but we are the sixth seed. So, you know, if the playoffs started today, we would be a wild card team and not even the worst one. But in fairness, looking around the AFC here, I mean, there's a lot of good teams, lots of three and one teams. Uh, the Dolphins, the Bengals, and the Colts being the undefeated teams in this parallel universe compared to what it is in real life. That's surely not the case in real life. And taking on another AFC West division rival, the 0-4 Denver Broncos. And wow, are they bad. I mean, just across the board. They only average 12 points per game. And that's not even last. That's 31st. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on. Now I'm curious. Who averages less than 12 points per game because even that right there is bad um the giants average 8.8 .8, but yeah man bo nicks and these broncos yet to win a game surely we will not drop to them today right let's get a look and see what this team meeting's all about it better be to talk about how freaking good the team has played so far this season and how they've achieved exports you know surpassed expectations i don't know what that cimk whatever the heck that nonsense was uh? let's talk about our opponent's weaknesses um everything <laughs> i asked you all to watch film and analyze their offense well what did we what do we see we know they average 12 points per game that is not good and we know they are starting a rookie quarterback in bo Nix, and apparently he is a weakness that coach smalls feels that we can exploit and he struggles with fumble so naturally, how we're going to attack that, I would think pressure, right? Get guys in the backfield. We need to strip the ball every time we hit him. Max, I love the ambition, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> Maybe once or twice if we're lucky, but yeah. No, force two fumbles, no. It's going to be risky enough to force one fumble. Um, I, we could do it potentially, right? We're going to need sacks, but for, uh, trying to force two fumbles, man, that's just like bound to not happen. So if we can get to Bo Nix one time, get a sack, get a fumble, that is going to earn our team nothing, apparently. I don't know. And we may as well try to lock up Trayvon Merrick and Nate Hobbs. I don't really want them going anywhere. They're only going to get upgrades. They're only going to get a little bit better as the season goes on. They both don't want to be here, but, you know, uh, myself and uh, Mr. Franklin, maybe, right? Mr. Maybe Mr. Lincoln. I don't think Mr. Lincoln has too much influence, but... Few of my dead president friends and I, we will have a sit down with these guys and try to figure something out. So Trayvon Merrick, yes, we're going to have to overpay for him. Expected value is four years, $32.2 million. And I mean, we have really a decent amount of salary cap. I mean, we'll just kind of get the talks going here. Four years, $36 million. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. So that was actually enough to lock up Trayvon Merrick. Happy about that. And Nate Hobbs, he wanted a mentor. I brought one in. I brought in Bradley Roby. That did help, but it's just that income tax is just weighing things down too much. And we're also going to have to pay for Nate Hobbs. His expected value is four years, $24 million. So, I mean, just like Merrig, we'll go 26.4 just to get the conversation started. And he was looking for a better fit, but he'll reconsider with more offers like this. So probably just need to throw him a little bit more ducats and Nate Hobbs should stay on board. Some upgrades for our rookies here. JPJ, who is, you know, supposed to be our lineman of the future, really. We'll go agile, keep him in the scheme fit. Want to get him a little bit better in the run blocking department. We haven't really had to take too many sacks so far this season. And I feel like, you know, all things considered, our offensive line has held up pretty well. I mean, Gardner Minshew, believe it or not, does is second in the league in passing yards. Now it is Madden, of course. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg, we need to probably... We'll get his pass coverage up a little bit. It's not very good. Probably should have went run stopper, but he's already kind of solid in that area. We do run... Uh, what? We're in a 4-3, right? We should be. Yeah, we're yeah we're most definitely in a 4-3. So having Eichenberg out there, you know, um, a little bit of pass coverage isn't going to hurt him. And then uh, Malcolm Kuntz, we'll just go power rusher so you know it's a trap game here potentially broncos own four we have played really well 
but it is truly the in any given Sunday mentality, right? And I think for this game, let's go ahead and bust out. Haven't done this yet so far this season. We are on the road. Let's go ahead and bust out the Akron Zips. Had to throw that in there as our alternate uniform. And it's first time wearing it. Maybe it'll bring us a little bit of good luck. Or maybe it'll be a curse and it'll cause us to get blown out. But at any rate, guys, if you are fired up for some more Akron Summits franchise, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Just hit 1,000 subscribers. Got a video for an NFL jersey giveaway. Go check that out on the channel if you have not already. And most importantly, let's get on down to Empower Field at Mile High and get ready for the game. There are the Akron Zips uniforms. Really, really crafty with that one, man. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed. I tried my best to model what exactly what the Akron Zips uh, uniforms look like. And once upon a time ago, I did have a um, College Football 25 Akron Zips Dynasty going on on this channel. And I could bring that back if anybody is interested or if anybody wants to. Just being perfectly honest, man, I don't have the burning passion for college football like I do the NFL. I know that's crazy. A lot of people, it's the opposite. A lot of people have a burning passion for college football in the NFL. They're just like, eh, whatever. But, uh, you know, try my best to ingrain myself in that series and get into it. But... I don't know, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm more of NFL, you know, Madden, uh, Madden guy, so, but if you guys do want to see that series, if anybody has requested, I, I, I can bring it back, and I will bring it back, but here comes Garner Minshew rocking the Akron Zips uniform, and as I mentioned, right now, he is second in the league in passing yards, now, is that because he's good, is that because our offensive line is good, is that because it's Madden, or is it a combination of all three? I don't know, but the only thing I know is over on my other series, and you know what? Early shot here. We're going to test Devontae Adams. He's getting pressed. He absolutely cooked in press scenarios in the last game, and, uh, you know, we'll see if he can do the same thing this game. High pointing it to Adams, and that time it was good defense there on the edge. Adams had a career game last week in the last episode and looking to, you know, kind of build on that this game, but... You know, maybe teams watched film, saw what happened, and, and maybe they put in some extra preparation for Devontae. I, for their sake, I sure hope so. Speaking of, Adams, he catches it there on the drag. Can't get uh, wrapped up there by PS2. And a gain of 20 to move the chains. I feel like Alexander Madison had a pretty decent game as well. We're going to try to continue that because if you guys remember, ooh, there's a nice block set. I believe that was JPJ. And there's Devontae Adams setting a good block. Patrick Sertan had to rush Madison down. One man to beat or else he would have scored. And he picked up a big, big gain of 29. I was about to say Kareem Hunt is sitting in free agency. And, you know, Kareem Hunt is Kareem Hunt. He's not going to be, you know, superstar X Factor, you know, game changing type of player, but. He's there, um, you know, and aside from Madison, I mean, we have Zamir White who never sees the field for whatever reason. We also have Amir Abdullah who has played pretty good in limited action. But I was going to say this is kind of like testing grounds for Madison because we could go in and scoop up a guy like Kareem Hunt. But if Madison keeps breaking off runs like that, I would say his job's probably safe. Test the RPO here on second and seven. Ball is on the 11-yard line, so we are threatening. I didn't like that at all, but, I mean, Madison with the vision. He's picking up six, nearly gets the first down. And we're, you know, we're going to continue to uh, to ride Madison as our workhorse. And, of course, as I say that, Coach wants nothing to do with it. He's not calling a single running play. Maybe he knows something that we don't, um, but I'm, I'm going run, and I'm going probably – go hb base follow a uh, lead blocker here left guard jackson powers johnson need him to lead the way for madison can he do it i mean he did that was all jpj and madison and that big upgrade pre-game we did give him a boost to agile which is going to help out the run blocking department and we really did not have to see too much of garner Minshew in this passing game really just that one to Devontae Adams, I believe. And Madison was able to drive down the field for most of that drive. And I am liking the way that we are starting out in this one, guys. Um, you know, Broncos are not supposed to be very good. We're three and one, so apparently we are supposed to be good. And when you're good like that, you're supposed to beat teams that you're supposed to beat. 
Good way to start this game on the first drive. And here comes the man who apparently fumbles a lot in this franchise here, Bo Nix. He's, I thought he was going to be, he was looking good in training camp in real life. Um, Yeah, two touchdowns to four picks, not even 700 yards. That's, that's kind of brutal. But he was looking pretty good in training camp. I mean, he, you know, hasn't really, at least in my opinion, looked too good to start. Um, that game against the Jets, they did win. That was uh, dangerous, treacherous weather conditions, so nobody really played that well. But we'll see how uh, Bo Nix does here. And this one, I mean, Javante Williams, it's, if he has a good running attack, they may not even need to feature Bo Nix too much. And that was a good opening drive there by the four-year pro out of UNC. Bo Nix coming out here. I got the fullback, Michael Burton, and Williams behind him. We had some pressure there and thought that was going to be Nate Hobbs on the pick. He definitely had a play on it. I think maybe I may have actually pressed the jump button a little prematurely. But in any case, it was, you know, led a little bit too far there by Bo Nix. So not really a good opening pass from him. And, oh, God, I'm usered up on Epps. That's not a good, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. Come on. Please, somebody hock down Marvin Mims. And... I am officially silenced by Bo Nix. What happened on that play? I I admit, I asked, I was trying to switch over to the line, and I was usured up on Marcus Epps, but really it wouldn't have mattered because Cortland Sutton was on the other side of that field. And okay, Bo Nix, touche. Touche, brother. I was just talking some smack about you, and you said, hold my beer, hold my Gatorade. We'll say, probably not chugging brewskis on the sideline. At least, at least Bo Nix is, and he seems like a... A well put together character, but a great response by Denver. Shot play. You don't really expect to see that. The score's nodded back at zero. I'm going to say that was an anomaly. Our defense has been playing really good this season. We haven't really seen too much uh, dumb stuff like that happen. So hopefully that is just a one off situation. And hopefully Devontae Adams can pick up where he. Oh, that's actually Jacoby Myers. My apologies. Okay. That's right. He is the superstar. Devontae Adams is the X Factor, a pretty, pretty good one-two punch, if I do say so myself. And we should start to get uh, our tight ends back. Brock Bowers, Michael Mayer, they've been, oh God, look at the look at the holes for Madison. He may go over 100, not sure if he's done that yet. So far in this season, he's at five for 55, and we still got a, about a half a quarter left to go in the first. This is a good time to take a shot off of play action here. We're into Broncos territory. The running game is working, so you would think that that would have, uh, you know, the opposing squad looking at that. And that, if it's not a hold, that could be roughing the passer. It's probably going to be a hold. What the fuck is this? Nope, I was wrong. Ineligible receiver. Yeah, I see that a little bit more here in Madden 25, especially on play actions and screens, which that's when you would expect there to be, you know, if there's going to no be no um, an ineligible man downfield, you would expect that to happen, especially on screens. But I have seen that a lot more here at Madden 25. That one wipes away another nice play. So first of 15, we go back to work out of the eye, and I don't really see anybody getting open. Minshew's going to take off. We know he can do that, trying to slide. Not too bad. I mean, picking up six. Uh, Minshew with the baby wheels. He's done that a few times so far in this this season and makes something that could have been <laughs> potential disaster into something positive. So all things considered, I guess I'm not uh, too upset about it. Second and nine, not the best place for a run, but the running attack is working and I am going to test the outside here with Madison. See if he can continue this good game. I mean, look at that. That's all Madison. The blocking wasn't even set up that great. Madison weaved. This guy's looking like a man possessed here today. I'm going to try play action again. If Bryant's not open, I'm probably going to be looking. Oh, we're going to get sacked, aren't we? Barely got that thing away. We had heavy, heavy pressure there in the backfield. Minshew goes down, takes a quarterback hit. That's going to make it third and eight. See Adams on the press again. I'm probably going to be looking uh, Trey Tucker's way. But if that safety does anything crazy, maybe we look. I mean, he kind of did. This could be Adams, but it's overthrown by Garner Minshew. And that is where Minshew's played great, yes. But maybe having more of an elite-level quarterback, he's able to make that pass. Minshew just didn't have the accuracy to get it there. Got to shut up here so I can drill this kick as well. 
one should be... Oh, God, my kicking woes continue. Daniel Carlson missed it. Um, I'm sorry, Daniel, brother. I just can't get these kicks mastered in Madden. I'll be the first to admit it. I was I was pretty much a lockdown lights out kicker in Madden 24, but this new and I could switch it back to that style. I get it, but you know I want to I, I want to do it how it's meant to be done, right? I want to keep it on. Well, you know, like this is the college kicking that they ported over from uh, college football 25. I'm going to keep it on that, but I have missed more kicks than I would like to admit this season. So just got to play through it here. Tyree Wilson, we're going to have him hopefully get some pressure off of the edge here. Trying to get to Bo Nix. It's going to be a wide open Cortland Sutton. Is this an 0-4 Broncos team? I believe, the, I believe it said they were 0-4, right? Yeah, 0-4. They're not playing like it. Show Blitz here. Bo Nix operating out of the eye, which he has been doing a lot so far this game. And that is just a wide open Javante Williams out of the backfield. Undercut him there on the cut stick. But Javante Williams has really been the main feature. I mean, I know Marvin Mims had that big touchdown grab on the previous drive. But aside from that, it's really been pretty much Javante Williams. Bo Nix not having to do a lot of passing in this one, which the Broncos are probably pretty happy about. Where's he going to go this time? He's going to dump it down to the fullback, Michael Burton, but only for a gain of a couple. So sevens on the scoreboard, but the Broncos are threatening. It's all because of that big play to Marvin Mims, really. But they do have some other stuff working in their favor. Defense who, you know, I've been praising them so far this season. They've been playing really good. Kind of took a step back in that first quarter, I would say. Cameron and Richardson, I'm going to have him play coverage on Cortland Sutton because I could see that definitely being the move. Nope, it's just Williams <laughs> again, and Jack Jones can't make the open field tackle, but janitor Robert Spillane doing the cleanup work, stopping Javante before he could uh, pick up the first down. This is a big third and two. I am going to go pressure here. Half tempted to guess run up the middle. I'm not going to, because knowing me, um, it would be a play-action shot, and I would just probably get burned. This is going to be a run, though. Surely it's Williams, and we did stop him. Yes. Thank you so much, Divine Diablo. And we'll see if Peter Gaffney should be Sean Payton, but apparently he's the new Bill Belichick in this game, not having his likeness. We'll see if they go for it, or they are going to go for it. Why? Why do teams do this to me? I don't like it. They always... I don't like it because they always get it, <laughs> really, is what, what it comes down to. We're going to do strong safety blitz. Maybe it's a run to Williams. It is, and he is going to be able to sneak the first down. Why couldn't you just kick the field goal, Peter? <laughs> Not really liking this here. We're going to guess pass. We're going to shade inside. Tyree Wilson, going to have him just, oh, it's a design run to Bo Nix. Make him fumble. We need a fumble. Of course, he's not going to fumble. He's going to break three tackles. Because Bo Nix does that, he's going to do the stanky leg because, of course, Bo Nix does that. That was our shot. We need to get one fumble on Bo Nix. Thought we were going to have it there. And, I mean, he's just hurtling guys, breaking tackles, doing stanky legs. Like, is this the Bo Nix from Oregon, right? The stand-up citizen, or is this uh, the bad boy Bo Nix? I don't know. Either way, I don't like it, and we now find ourselves down by seven. There's Madison's stats today, averaging 11.5 yards on the ground. Should probably ought to continue to go to him. I mean, that's what smart man would do, right? I, I, I like to consider myself a smart man at times. I know I can make some boneheaded decisions, but we'll at least start with Madison. A little half slide to the right. See if we can uh, kick this thing outside. Need some good blocks. They're not really there. But again, it's just Madison doing all the work. This is the best he's looked all season. Now, seven for seven. Keeping that 11 yard per carry average and getting close to moving the sticks. Really want to answer here. So long methodical drive hopefully is in order. We're going to go screen pass to Madison. See if he can do it on the ground as well. And I mean, why not? He's pretty, he might have over 100 all purpose yards now. Very, very close to it. Let's go a little TE attack on second and 10. Going to try to roll out and we should be able to do that successfully. Harrison Bryant wide open in the middle of the field. Very nice. He is a... Uh, Playing a lot more now, obviously, because of the Michael Mayers, Brock Bowers injury situation. I know we get one of them back next week. I want to say it's 
it's Bowers. I think we get Brock Bowers back next week, which will just be a welcome addition for me indeed. Harrison Bryant's played pretty good, but Mercedes Lewis, he's not not really an offensive pass catcher. I mean, he's he's a blocking guy, and that's what we uh, brought him in for. Zach Gentry is is Zach Gentry. I mean, and, and Madison is a dog. He's over 100 yards now. Alexander Madison doing what he does best, apparently, getting us very close now to scoring range. I hope the RPO works out, but really, like, I was going to say I'm not, ooh, dangerous pass, but Minshew did. Okay, uh, that was very, very close. That was almost an interception or, at best case scenario, a drop down. But I think the DB just probably mistimed it. And Trey Tucker, let's get a second look at it here. I mean, right, uh, we got to go to replay, man. I literally saw my life flash before my eyes there, right there. Yeah, I thought that that was going to be a house call. Who was that on the coverage? That was Abrams Daniels. Is that what it says? I don't know. Uh, but, shh, I mean, Minshew, it was a good pass. And even better catch by Trey Tucker. And we find ourselves uh, threatening to tie it up here. As long as I don't miss an extra point, which is always a friggin' possibility here. We are at mile high as well. And I think I just missed that, didn't I? Nope. I almost did. But 14 14, defense need to come back to work, make a good stop. And we'll see how this next drive goes. Gotta get that fumble on Bo Nix. Really thought we were gonna have an opportunity because he was carrying that thing like a loaf of bread, trying to find the end zone. But he he did his thing. And he ultimately made us pay. So, you know, see if uh, we can possibly get something done here. Javante Williams also making us pay. Him and Madison, man, this is a battle of the running backs, it would appear. Doing it in the, you know, catching the ball, doing it out of the backfield. Jarring there with Trayvon Merrick. Okay, I like to see it. And uh, first and 10 coming up here. That was a good, good pickup. Getting the ball all the way down to the 41. Let's guess pass. Let's shade inside. I need a Butler or so somebody, please. Get back there to Bo Nix. That is all I'm asking to Cameron Richardson. Nice open field tackle on Devon Javante Williams. That'll make it second and eight. Guess and pass again here. Got to watch screen. I feel like this is kind of set up to where it could be a screen. It's not going to be a screen. It's going to be uh, dumped down there to Greg Dolchich, the tight end, but not good enough for first down. It's third and three. It looks like Bo Nix and the Broncos are going to call single back. We're going to come out zone, and we're going to audible to pressure and just really hoping it's a run play here. I'm kind of selling out for that. It's not Divine Diop. Oh, God. Okay. Um, that time it's Tim Patrick, and I, I didn't guess run or anything like that. I don't know how the heck Tim Patrick got that open. Yeah, I didn't guess run. A Trayvon Merrick, I think he might have got bumped up there with, with Marcus Epps. Cause there's no way Tim Patrick should have got that open. Like it's yeah. What whole wait, what? Okay. Trayvon Merrick. First of all, why is he lined up? Okay. I don't, I don't know what Trayvon Merrick is doing. there so close to the line, but then he just kind of like jumps here. But by that time, I mean, Tim Patrick had the whole entire defense cooked. Probably should have been uh Trayvon or uh, Marcus Epps's responsibility. But yeah, this is the most adversity we faced all season. And it's again against arguably one of the worst teams in the league. It's like I said at the beginning, man, this could be a trap game. You got to watch out for those trap games. We'll start out something safe here. Screen pass to Madison. We got pressure coming in. Got to get this ball away. And Madison, there he goes. Okay, can we juke Patrick Zertan? We cannot. This dude, Alexander Madison, man, he so he's got over 100 rushing yards. Got 37 yards through the air. So flirting with 200 all-purpose yards. I mean, he's playing the best football that we've seen him play. Not sure if it's the best football of his, his whole career or not, but definitely the best that we've seen him play. And I'll tell you what, single high safety here. We're definitely at least going to look Devontae Adams' way. No, we'll just go to Harrison Bryant. His second big catch of the game. It's a flag. Will that be a late hit, though? Please tell me it's not holding. It is. Yeah. Unnecessary roughness. Late hit. I will certainly take it. That's going to take it all the way down to the 16th. I mean, really, we <laughs> might have gotten down here a little bit too quickly. Like, I don't really want. Yes, I want to score. And I'm going to try 
obviously my darndest to do that, but like, I don't want the Broncos. Yeah, let's just kind of take some of this clock off here. The way that Bo Nix is slinging these deep bombs and Broncos receivers making our secondary look foolish. I don't really want to give them another shot necessarily. Um, so let's just kind of slow things down here. Not in any rush to snap this ball quite yet. Come out single back here. Trips bunch to the right. Who's going to go ahead and get open for me? It is Bryant again. Trying to juke him, man. Maybe shouldn't do that with Harrison. He's not uh, the most elusive chap in the world. He kind of is, though, for a tight end. I actually like Harrison Bryant a lot. Um, he played good uh, against the Browns, as a matter of fact, on Sunday when uh, when they took on the Raiders and lost in embarrassing fashion, might I add. No way Cleveland should have lost that game. At least I don't think so. They did. And let's see if we can uh, convert it's third down here. It's Bryant again. He's been the man on this drive. And really, because there's, there's no clock runoff in Madden, we don't even necessarily... I'm going to call a timeout just because I don't want to rush things. Call the wrong play and do something stupid. See if we can cap this drive off with some points. Why stick to Adams? It is not Patrick Sertan on him either. And Devontae going to catch it. He tends to get open on that little Y stick. That's one of the few times. I. So you guys know this. I probably sound like a broken freaking record. But I typically do coach suggestions. I would say probably 80 to 85% of the time. There are a few situations like this where I do tend to tend to venture off and call my own plays. Why stick usually works in that situation. Got to make sure I don't uh, miss this kick. I haven't really been. There's a good one. There's a good one. All right. So 21 is 27, 21, 21, I should say, is 27 seconds too much for too much time for Bo Nix and these Broncos. Guess we're about to find out. Yeah, look at Bo Nix, man. 166. So not crazy in the yardage, but this guy's got three touchdowns already. And it's just like, where's the guy that was uh, supposed to be fumbling, you know, and not playing that good and having some of the worst team stats in the league. It's a screen pass to Williams. And I mean, the Broncos already in field goal range. Like This team is not playing like an 0-4 squad is all I'm saying. Yeah, I just can't really figure it out. Would love Max Crosby to do something because he really hasn't too much in this whole entire franchise. It's going to be Cortland Sutton. Uh, Broncos going to call a timeout. They still got one more left, presumably already in field goal range. Uh, but got to make sure we don't allow a touchdown or something like that. That would be absolutely deflating. Pressure really has not been there, you know, too much. This season, I would say that is going to be caught by Dolchich, forcing the Broncos to call a timeout. But got to figure they're going to knock this one through, man. I mean, I would be surprised if they didn't. They are going to do just that. So, all right. A little unfortunate. 24-21, though. Uh, it's three-point game. I believe the Broncos do get the ball. Offense is playing decent, but we got to figure out this defense, which really for the whole season, they pretty much had it figured out. I don't even know if we've allowed a 30-point game yet. I could be wrong. I, I want to say we haven't. This one already flirting with 30 points from the Broncos. So just got to tighten it up. New half of football. Got a lock in here. And really, the defense has uh, some questions to answer. Because as I showed pregame, and you're about to see here on some of these highlights, Broncos were not good statistically in anything. And they are looking statistically Pretty good in everything. Maybe not so much the defense, like the run defense, but as far as on the offensive side of the ball, Javante Williams is tearing it up on the ground. Bo Nix and his receivers are getting open. And you know what? With that being said, I came out blitz, but we're going to go ahead and audible this into good old man coverage here because of stuff like that. It's Marvin Mims again. He's got to be over 100 yards, I would think, especially with that deep bomb. Broncos picking up right where they left off. I'm back in the flats up because I need to keep everything in front of us right now. I know that seems crazy here in just the third quarter, but it's like, you know, that's <laughs> that's what's happening. People are just getting open for big routes and big gains, and I'm not a fan of it. Has Bo Nix even thrown an incompletion? No, that's a serious question. I don't know the answer to it. I, I don't feel like he hasn't. <laughs> If, if he has, it's been like maybe one or two, right? And that's just, that's ultimately not going to get it done. Max Crosby could be a big game wrecker. Oh, wish that would have been a play action. 
because he probably would have got to Bo Nix there. Instead, it's a give to Williams and another first down from Denver. Broncos got a fullback in the game now. They're in our territory to the 44, so we're going to use her up with Divine Diablo, and there's some good run defense. Thank you. Javante Williams almost broke a tackle, but Nate Hobbs was there to clean it up luckily, and that's really like the first, I want to say, negative game that we've really seen in quite some time. And since Max Crosby's not really... Okay, there we go. Good use, sir. I was about to say... I was going to have him drop back in coverage. Good user found Javante Williams for only a gain of a couple. I think that we can safely guess pass on this one. Obvious passing situation. And can we please just get the Broncos off of the field? Maybe a sack on Knicks. He's going to take off and almost juked us there. But luckily, Marcus Epps was there to, to bring him down. And we got an injured Bronco on the field. Haven't seen any injuries really too much. There's uh, Cody Barton who was a member of our St. Louis Sentinels squad. And this is going to be a long field goal from Will Lutz. Wow. I thought that they were going to probably punt this. I know there's some air here in mile high field goal. Yeah, that's way off the mark. I, I mean, that was like a 58 yarder. That was a long one. And we finally get a stop. Our defense does step up. Little Ben, but don't break. And now we're going to get the ball back with a chance to take our first lead of the game. Going to go back to Madison here. He was such a big impact in that first half. Going to also double team up on the nose tackle. It's a little draw play. Madison again, finding some lanes, some vision. Gain of four. You might not think it's the best thing in the world, but hey, I always say if you pick up four yards on every single play, you're going to win the ball game. It's as simple as that. Let's just come out and at least entertain the idea of QB sneak. I mean, we got... Freaking Stanley yelling that size hole there. Mitch, you could probably trip over his shoelace and pick this one up. Going to get it with ease. I will never understand in Madden why the defenders don't pinch the line. It's third and inches. You're coming out goal line like it doesn't take a genius to figure out what's going to happen. Third and three. We did hit Bryant earlier on this one, and that is probably going to be the move again. Harrison Bryant having a big game. That's about his fourth or fifth catch, uh, stepping in in the absence of our Two starting star tight ends, and he has not disappointed. That was a little option choice route there. I thought he was just going to kind of sit down on it, but I'm actually kind of glad that he, you know, decided to uh, break that thing out to the right. He had a lot of daylight, and now I think it is time to come out here, play action shot, maybe look for Jacoby Myers. No, I had Madison sitting down on the curl, but just didn't have enough time to throw it. Pass does fall incomplete. One thing I will say about Madden 25, they they kind of nerfed the uh, the play action crossing route. Like it's still it's still semi broken. Don't get me wrong, it is. But I mean it was like pretty much automatic <laughs> in the previous Maddens, and uh, it's it's not so automatic anymore. And uh, is that Brian again? That time it's actually Zach Gentry. Okay, the other tight end getting involved. We are in field goal range. Question mark. It's it's always it's always tough with me right it's always tough when i'm kicking kicks even extra points aren't always automatic but uh ah uh, okay maybe myers gets open here no oh brian why did you okay that works he was supposed to keep going and he actually just kind of stayed where he was at but that is his fifth catch for 67 yards and it actually ends up working out pretty good we got the ball inside the 10 yard line here let's go back to madison our workhorse Thought we had something there for a moment, but uh, did kind of converge there at the end, unfortunately. And I mean, not a whole lot that uh, the coach is really suggesting. I mean, maybe I form stretch, HB stretch isn't the worst thing in the world. However, we're going to need to make sure that somebody blocks Patrick Sertan. I do like the fact that he moved back on the route. So maybe Madison can cut back in. Not going to be able to. That is going to be a big third down. Would love to cap this thing off with a touchdown. Maybe it's just uh, Harrison Bryant, right? He's been kind of the guy. Nope, Jacoby Myers, please hang on. And he does. That was not an easy catch. Had to hang on through contact. Jacoby Myers did, in fact, do it. And we have taken the lead for the first time today. Got to keep uh, making sure our defense plays like they did on that last drive. But all in all, this has been kind of a shootout. Wasn't expecting it. I'm definitely here for it. Making for a very fun fourth quarter coming up.
All right, don't touch that dial, or I should say button. Not really any dials, probably, for people watching YouTube, but 28-24. Broncos have the ball here. We have our first lead of the game. Both teams have looked good at times, and both teams' uh, defense has struggled at times. So what does Bo Nix and head coach Peter Gaffney, a.k.a. Sean Payton, have in store for us? I don't like how Robert Spillane... Okay, yeah, put him in a little... Spy there. It's going to be Williams. And look at Divine Diablo. He has been a weapon for us. Up for a contract extension. And you know what? He's not the best rated overall player in the world. But I feel like he's earned it. Kind of like what, what Madison is doing today, right? Uh, matter of fact, let's just have Divine Diablo sit there in the middle of the field. They're going to go back to Williams again. And now this Akron Summit's defense, run defense specifically, is starting to show up. There's Alexander Johnson, that middle linebacker that we just picked up in free agency a couple weeks ago, stepping in to make a good play. And right now, we just need good zone defense here. Guessing pass, shading inside. Javante Williams is looking a little gas back there. Going to have Crosby play this side of the field, and that's Dolchich. Toe tapping on the sideline, keeping this drive alive for the Broncos. A nice, nice throw there by Nix. I'm putting Spillane on a blitz. It's a little dicey to do that. Divine D, yeah, maybe shouldn't have done that. It's Dolchich again. Oh, God, breaking a tackle. I just feel like we needed something. You know, we have not really gotten any sense of pressure on Bo Nix. Probably should have just had Robert Spillane, you know, play the coverage that he was supposed to play. But sometimes you got to take a gamble, right? Sometimes gambles win your ball games, and sometimes they lose your ball games. Not saying that that lost us the ball game necessarily. Max Crosby making a good hit on Javante Williams. We've definitely halted his progress. He was tearing it up in the first half. Not really getting it going here in the second. Zone coverage again. Um, debated going man. But, oh, come on. We're so close to Bo Nix. It's Dolchich. And that is a good uh, defense there by Marcus Epps. He actually dropped that. Have not seen. Yeah, we have two, two passes defense today. Okay. I definitely like to see that. And, you know, we haven't really seen too many Bo Nix incompletions. That time we did. And we're going to guess pass again here. Probably have Tyree Wilson. Yeah. Uh, drop out and play a little coverage. Come on, get to him. There we go. It's Christian Wilkins. That was all. That was a coverage sack right there. Okay. The pressure was not even crazy to start with. But I think uh, dropping that extra defender back there to play a little coverage was probably the right move. Bo Nix couldn't find anybody. He tried to scramble last minute and big. That's a, that's a big man right there, Christian Wilkins. You do not want to be taking too many hits from him. Let me tell you. And what's up with this camera angle? Did I did I do that? Did I do that? Yeah, I guess I did do that. Mir Abdullah, just gonna watch this thing. Ooh, that could be a dagger punt out at the eight yard line. So we got 92 yards to march downfield. Alexander Madison at 159 all-purpose yards. He is having a man's game. And no real reason to go away from him here, especially down here. Dangerous part of the field. But look at Madison continuing to go. I mean, he, he may have, I mean, he definitely locked himself in a roster spot. He was going to be on the roster anyways, but... You know, all that uh, Kareem Hunt nonsense we were talking about the last couple episodes. That chatter just definitely, oh, quiet it down. Come on, Minshew, get it away. Madison Stonewall there met by several defenders, and we got ourselves a third and three coming up. We're keeping it on the ground with Madison here. Going to run behind Mercedes Lewis, and Madison just with all the space in the world. Mercedes Lewis is a great, one of the best probably Locking tight ends that this league has seen and been doing it for longer than anybody has. Got to find a way to get down here, hopefully, and either score some points or just drain this clock down to its entirety. And, I mean, Madison is just going to probably do either or. He's either going to score or help us drain this clock down to its entirety. Give this man a game ball right now because he has certainly earned it. Oh, yeah. Just for those curious, it is on all Madden. I know... Seems crazy to believe, like, we got this team here, which is the, the Las Vegas Raiders, is what this team is, and not really a great team. And then, you know, for those of you who watch my SFL series, we got, like, damn near a 90-rated overall team. We're 1-5, or we're 1-4 in, in that series. 
and we're about to be four and one here with Akron Summits. I know it doesn't make any sense at all. I kind of like coaches saying shallow cross, and we definitely want to pick up another first down. Typically, Devontae Adams can get open on this route. That's that is the only route that I'm looking at, though. I can tell you that much. Yeah, Adams gonna catch it. And he's been like really one of the only receivers that has a tough. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. Harrison Bryant does. But yeah, that was huge. Had to get one more first down there. Now we can let this thing run all the way down to the two minute warning. So one more first down officially does end the game. Um, if anybody can is up for that task, I feel like it is definitely one Alexander Madison. And ooh, didn't necessarily follow the block there. Was trying to trying to run behind JPJ. Didn't really happen. Broncos gonna call a timeout, but look, I mean, there's no, no way in Hades that I'm throwing a pass here. Even if I have to force them to use all their timeouts, even if we gotta punt the ball back to them, you know, it is what it is. I'm not throwing a pass, and I, oh, I should have. I got greedy there. I saw a little bit of daylight to the outside. Tried to cut that thing over there with Madison. Just should have taken it inside. And you know what? Maybe I lied. No way in Hades that I'm throwing a pass here. Because the coach is even saying pass it, but we are only going screen pass here. This time Amir Abdullah checks into the game. We are only, only going screen pass. That is the only thing that we're doing. Abdullah going to catch it. He's not going to get it. That's okay, though. Broncos going to call a timeout. We are going to punt, hopefully pin him deep. And a field goal does them absolutely nothing. They, they have to score a touchdown. So... Would have liked to get that first down, yes, but not, you know, 100% upset with the outcome. A.J. Cole, hopefully he can punt a good one. It's going to be obviously a touchback. That's not A.J. Cole. That's me. The Broncos do got a minute and 42 left, though, so I'm not feeling 100% comfortable. All right, guys. I mean, we're, we're guessing pass on every single play. It's, you know, obvious. <laughs> They're not running the ball here, that's for sure. Well, maybe Bo Nix, well, he is going to take off. Oh, need to get that fumble. They got to hurry up to the line, though, because they are all out of timeouts. And uh, it's not going to do those runs and check downs and stuff like that. Bo Nix, what's he doing? Come on, get that sack. Just shade over top here, guys. Do not let anything get past you. Keep everything behind you. That is, ooh, that was almost an interception there by Nate Hobbs. That would have been awesome. Broncos got to go for it, though. I mean, there's, you know, <laughs> can't do anything else. Putting it back to us isn't going to do us any good. Just like before, though, we're guessing pass. We're shading over top here. And just got to make sure that nothing, nothing crazy happens. That was actually a catch. Wow, Cortland Sutton keeps this game alive. That's annoying. Just barely catching it. It's a good pass by Knicks and really... An even better catch by Cortland Sutton. Well, they keep it interesting for a bit longer, if nothing else. And they, I mean, they they could, they could score. This game is definitely not over. Cortland Sutton going to get it again and step out of bounds. They are into our territory now as well. Really needed to get them off the field, you know, end the game, essentially ice the game on that fourth down. And it was just a playmaker making a play. Really, it's, it's all you can say. I mean, you know, uh, Cortland Sutton is, he is a good player. And I mean, that is not keeping him in bounds. Come on, Marvin Mims going to get out of bounds. And they've marched this thing now all the way down to the 35. I'm sending a little bit of heat here. I don't like how we're just making this so easy for Bo Nix. And then this, this game just got very interesting, man. Uh, oh, God, no. I, can't, I cannot believe that they got all the way down the field here. With that much ease, Bo Nix, come on, get to him. Oh, he caught it on the one-yard line. They got to hurry. They got to hurry to the line. They're not going to get it off. We stop him at the one. Oh, my God. I'm about to go up my blood pressure medication, man. That was... <laughs> cannot believe they got it all the way down with, with that, you know, with, with that much ease. Like, they just drove down the field. No adversity, but you know what? The truest of true definition of bend but don't break. We bended like freaking Gumby out there, but we did not break. Now, Father Time was definitely uh, definitely our 12th man, I would say. A win's a win. That one was a lot closer than really what it should have been. But we are going to improve now. 
to four and one if you can believe that and look at Bo Nix man 320 only four incompletions 83 percent completion percentage two touchdowns Garner Minshew had three he was efficient but this is like the lowest amount of yardage that we've seen however didn't need to throw the ball really that much because we had Alexander Madison 19 149 7.8 on the ground and a touchdown Javante Williams started out hot, but but then just it was all Bo Nix. And I wouldn't be surprised maybe if Madison gets a breakout. You know, that, that wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. Harrison Bryant had a good game, 5 for 67. Marvin Mims, 5 for 103, but most of it came on that first touchdown pass or, the, or that first, you know, touchdown play of the game. Javante Williams played good. Madison, I mean, did he have 200 all-purpose yards? He was just short. Barely, barely missed it. And, of course, uh, Cortland Sutton played good. Devontae Adams, you know, we didn't really have too many receiving yards in this one. Uh, as far as defense goes, Christian Wilkins had a TFL, which was the sack, but they're going to count it as both Nate Hobbs, Divine Diablo. Not really anything too crazy from our defense. Our defense tried their best to let us down in this one, but at the end of the day, we come away with the dub. And it was a hard-fought game by the Summits. But we did not get a fumble for Bo Nix, but that's okay. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Everybody is feeling good after the win. Good. I'm frustrated we didn't get to do a good job shutting down that rookie QB. Look, I get it, but we got the win. That was a great suggestion. Just needs to execute better. A win's a win, man. I mean, Bo Nix may have tore us up, but at the end of the day, Bronco is going to fall to 0-5. And we are going to improve to four and one. And really, I mean, let's, uh, we should probably take a look around the league here real quick. I mean, the Chiefs haven't played yet. We don't know really what they're going to do, but uh, we got the Dolphins undefeated, Buccaneers undefeated, 49ers undefeated, Colts, Bengals, but we're right there. We're four and one Packers. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of teams that are either undefeated or only one loss Packers Rams Jets Cowboys Bills Chiefs we got to see what they did today Seahawks you know then you got your 500 ball clubs here the Panthers Chargers Cardinals Saints Vikings Giants Browns Steelers Texans Eagles and Titans with only one win and then the winless squads here we got the Jaguars pay uh, Patriots Ravens Broncos obviously Commanders, Bears, and Falcons. So there's a lot of really good teams in the league. Pretty much this league is like either you're really good or you're really bad. Not a whole lot of teams on the in-between. And we're trying to separate ourselves from the pack and take on the Pittsburgh Steelers and their good defense next week. But really, I mean, I am just all smiles with this Summits franchise. Wish some of those smiles could carry over to my SFL series. But you know what? That series is fun for different reasons. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.